So let me share my screen. And let's start today's lecture. So it's... Uh, Doctor, I want uh, to ask. Sure, go ahead. Will we have anything from the probability in the second exam? Which second exam? Uh, the final exam, will we have probability or only statistics? No, we'll have probability. They are connected together. We will have from chapter one to the last thing, everything. Yes, focus will be on the second part, but we will have everything, yes. Okay. Okay, so today is March 8th. Majid, go ahead. Um, doctor, to check the paper, can we do it uh, an online meeting? Because I can't take a day off and come um, to queue okay, you directly. Uh, you, we can do. I will uh, probably I can do it during the office hours, the scheduled office hours. On the uh, I cannot dedicate time. It will be public. Yeah, it will be in front of others. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, because uh, you, you are, you yeah, have. 40 something in this class and 40 other, I mean, we need days if I need to have like 10, 15 minutes to each student. So I will dedicate the office hours that are on the, the, the syllabus and you can, uh, you can check. Yes, during that, I'm fine with that. Okay, uh, office hour has a link, right? So I can just join through that link and join off. The, okay, perfect. No, I will create, I will create. Usually I will, uh, no. Usually I will be on the uh, blackboard. I will be on Blackboard. Yes, the 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 virtual classroom, what they call it in Blackboard. So check me on Blackboard during the office hours. Okay. Thank you, doctor. Okay. So today we start statistics. Which is the second part of the of the course and statistics is the science generally of handling data. And statistics will do some categorizations to, to, uh, to put a context of what we are going to talk about. Can be classified in two general parts, descriptive statistics, and inferential statistics. Descriptive is, from its name, is how to describe the data, how to present the data. Different ways of presenting the data. And as you will see, we'll start this today. Uh, there are two general ways. We can present the data numerically or graphically. And as you will see in, in numerical schemes, also we'll do two things. We'll do uh, measures of locations. We can describe the location of the data or we can describe the variability of the data. Graphical schemes or graphical measures, the beauty of them, they will they tell about location and variability in same graph, as we will see. So this is the topic of today and probably part of Wednesday's lecture is descriptive statistics. And then starting probably on Wednesday and next and uh, the week after the break and the, for the rest of the of the semester we'll talk about inferential statistics. Inferential statistics is utilizing the data to uh, reach decisions and in analysis. 
and we'll talk about different things under differential statistics. So we'll talk about parameter estimation. We'll talk about interval estimation. And finally, we'll do hypothesis testing. So these are the remaining topics uh, of, uh, of this course. And, and generally, these are a bit lighter than, than the part we did on, on probability. Okay, so let's start with some definitions. And the first definition we want to handle is the population. What's a population in statistics? You know the population, you all know population of countries, right? Population of Qatar, population of Saudi, population of France, and so on. So what's a population in statistics? Population is a group or totality of objects that have something in common. So, for example, students in GNG 200 uh, in spring 221 are a population. They have something in common. They are all registered in different sections in GNG 200. Those in L02 uh, that we are in right now, also another population. Those who are registered for the 2, 2 p.m. Uh, section are uh, population. Also, Q students generally uh, are population. What's common between them? They are all Q students. Uh, uh, planes owned by Qatar Airways, another population. All the aircrafts that are owned by Qatar Airways, they form a population. What's common between them? They are owned by, by uh, Qatar Airways, uh, and so on. Products of, for example, Baladna, another population. What's common? They, they form, uh, they have something in common, which is being product from Baladna uh, farm or Baladna factory. So this is a population. It's a group of objects, can be small, can be large, usually large. Populations are usually large. Uh, in size, but they have to have something in in common uh, to uh, to be called a population. Okay, so once we have the population, we can define the uh, another important thing, which is a sample. What's a sample? Simply, sample is subset of the population. A sample is a subset of the of the population. So, if this is, for example, if this is my population. What's, let's say, the English alphabet, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T. This is 
my my population is the English alphabet. English alphabet is a population. I can take a sample of that. which is O H D K. This is a sample of the English alphabet. Why do we need samples? Why do we usually sample population? Very simply, Usually, populations are large in size. And we cannot conduct studies for all members of the population. So what do we do? We take a sample. We conduct experiment on the sample. And then we generalize the result Is the results to the population. So if they say, you always hear this in, uh, in the news or the newspapers, the uh, ratio of uh, people in Qatar who have diabetes is 30% 40%. Does that mean that everyone in Qatar went to the hospital and they they check for diabetes no or this maybe in Qatar sometimes they, they they do all the population but in other countries big countries when they have millions of people or 30 percent of people in Qatar are obese they are overweight does it mean that they check everyone in Qatar for uh, they check the weight of everyone in Qatar no well they did the sample they took a sample of the population, like 1,500. And uh, in this course, we'll not talk uh, a lot about uh, sampling. Sampling is an art by itself. It's uh, uh, how to sample, where to collect your samples, how can you guarantee that your sample is well representing the, the, uh, the population. Then you you assume that your sample was taken correctly and then you said you generalize your results if this sample of 1000 people you found 30 percent of them overweight then you said okay people in qatar 30 percent of the people in qatar all the population they are overweight even though you did not check everyone in in qatar okay okay so let's start talking about different ways of presenting our data and let's start with what we call measures of location and the first measure of location that we want to talk about is the sample mean what's the sample mean very simply given N observations x1, x2 to xn. The sample mean, which is very important and will continue with us in all the remaining chapters. Sample mean x bar is defined as.
very simply is the average of the observations. Let me write it x1 plus x2 plus xn over n, which is, you can write it as summation from i equals 1 to n, xn over, over n. So, sample mean is simply, again, if you recall the bar that we talked about earlier, if we assume that our observations are like this, then our x bar is the point that will balance the, uh, the bar. So, balancing Of course, the difference between uh, here, the, the graph that I, I put here, and the graph that we put when we talked about the mean of random variable, for the mean of random variables, I do not have equal weights. Those circles or those uh, masses were not equal weight. The weights of, of them, when we talk about random variables, uh, they reflect the probability, their probability. So if I have high probability, I have big mass. If I have small probability, I have small mass. Here we assume all observations, they have the same probability, let's say, or the same weight, which is one over n. I multiply all of them by, by one uh, over n. That's why I have this, uh, this n. Time. If our population is finite, then we can define the population mean. So instead of the sample mean, sample mean means you went, you took a sample from the population, you took a sample of like 1,000 people, you you uh, did their weight, you measure their weight, and you find the average is, uh, whatever, 70 kilo, and you said, okay, the average weight of people in Qatar, whole Qatar is 70 kilos. However, if we, are, we manage to do, to measure the weight of everyone in Qatar, then what we will get is the population mean, the Doctor, aren't all populations uh, finite? Uh, if they are discrete and they are practical population, yes, they are finite. If they are continuous or they are hypothetical, then they will be infinite. Can you give us an example of an, of an infinite population? Depth of the sea. Like uh, your population is uh, the depth of the sea, and then when they they plot the depth of the sea, they you they don't go and measure every point of the sea. I don't know there are some new uh, equipments, but they do samples. They don't measure every point in the sea. Uh, so the depth of the sea can be. Uh, like we said, any number, any continuous number between zero and whatever, 10 kilos. How many depths I have between zero and 10 kilos? Infinite number. Okay. Uh, Makes sense, yes. Depth, yes, but in terms of, uh, again, discrete, discrete ones, you can also look at the population of, uh, yeah, the, the different random experiments that we did, like, uh, flipping a coin until you get a head, or uh, so this uh, number of of uh, number of uh, flips is a population. Why was common in those? They are emerging from the same random experiment, and uh, you can uh, well. Uh, I I think I have to be careful with that because in that case. L -l 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 
they will not be if you there is no way to sample them in the C example there is a way to sample them I need to think of something like the number of uh, sand grains in the desert can we know uh, the, the from you know, it's how many uh, samples I have uh, the grains or the can you can think of something that is really huge uh, uh, to think of Right. Population mean is simply if you can, if you are able to do all the population, then you divide by capital N, where N is the size of the population. Like imagine you want to do the the to study the average weight of people of China or uh, people on Earth. That's a huge population. It's virtually, practically, it's not infinite, but virtually, it's really large that you cannot, you cannot uh, handle it. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's so mean is the sample mean is the first uh, measure of. Of location. So the mean, let me before going to the second one, let me do a quick example. If we are interested again to, to study the weight, the average weight of uh, study, average weight of QU male students, let's say, since you are. So you sample, collect a sample of whatever, 20 students, and then X bar is just the summation of the weights, so we find whatever, uh, 70 plus 65 plus somewhere 105 plus, I don't know, 37, no, no 30 is right, 82, and so on, and then you divide by 20. And then you can get the the weight of those of curious students. If you somebody told you, okay, we have only for the male students, we have around four thousand or five thousand students only in Qatar University, male students. Then let's uh, measure them all. If you manage to do that, so you will get new so seventeen plus sixty five all the way over 4,000, let's assume that, if all students are 4,000, then you get the exact, the exact uh, mean of the, or the exact average weight of the students in Qatar University. Okay. The problem with the uh, mean is that problem with the mean, one second, Abdul, is the fact that it is affected by outliers. So what does that mean? Assume again that I asked you to, uh, to, uh, to do a sample of 20 students, uh, take their average weight, and then that should reflect the, the population of Qatar University students. So some one of you was so lazy, he was just close to the new sports facility. Uh, I'm not sure if you've been there. It's a very nice facility, by the way. Uh, I've been there a few times. Uh, and most of the people there, yeah, it, don't, we're not talking about faculty, and faculty, all of them, like me, they are overweight. But if we are talking about students, yani, mashallah, they, most of them who are there are healthy, and the yani, weights of them, I, I assume, they are in the 60s and 70s. So one of you, you went there, and uh, you did your uh, sample quickly. That sample will not, will not reflect the 
main population of Qatar University. But after that, or one other student, he just came across one students who are really obese, like 120, 130. If you add that students to your sample, the mean, the X bar will be totally different, right? Just by adding one, one very heavy students or one very uh, thin student. So those who are have extreme, extreme values, we call them outliers and they affect the mean because in your calculation in, uh, in this equation, in this equation, you have to, to add all samples. So the whole mean, the, the, uh, the place of the fulcrum to balance the bar, you have to, it moves right and left based on where the samples, the samples are. One way to, to, to avoid that is using the median. Median is simply, I'm not sure if you used it before, but median is the simply the middle point when you rank your values. So when you rank your values from smallest to largest, the middle point is the is the media. So for example, assume that, assume the sample is, so assume that we have a, uh, this data, let's say two plus uh, two, three, seven, five, uh, nine, okay? Three, seven, five, nine. What's X bar in this case? X bar is two plus uh, 10, 15, 24, 26, or five, 10, 19, 26. Let's say, let's make it, 26, no, 26 over, over 5, which is, X bar is 5.2, right? 5. What's the median? Median, let's call it X tilde. Median is, you need to rank your data, rank the data. So it's 2, 3, 5, seven, nine. What is the middle point? Middle point is this, right? So X bar, X tilde is five. Now, assume that, instead of nine, instead of nine, you had 20, for example. So your data is two, three, seven, five, twenty. So what's X bar in this case? X bar five, ten, thirty, thirty-seven over five, which is seven point four. So as you can see, by changing one one data point the mean was affected substantially. It was 5.2, now it's 7.4. However, what's X tilde? X tilde, again, rank the data again, two, three, five, seven, 20. What's the middle point? So median was not affected. So this is the power of the median. It's, it does not get affected by, by the extreme uh, values that usually happens when you do sampling. 
uh, especially if you are do sampling, you are doing samplings using some instruments. Some instruments sometimes they give very wrong reading. So if you got, if you are collecting some signals or some data, usually the first step before you process your sample is to clean to clean the the collected data. Sometimes there are you are sure that there was something wrong uh, with your instrument that you collected a data that is uh, really extreme and that would affect all of your of your calculations. So I will get into your blackboard to enable the the uh, the uh, attendance and uh, Abdullah, you have the questions. Please, can you ask ask your questions while I'm getting into blackboard? And for the rest of you, if you want to get into your blackboard so that you can mark your attendance right away. Okay, sure. Um, professor, now uh, let us assume that I want to measure the mean of a specific population where I cannot uh, measure all the samples. Okay. You cannot so measure all, can all the population. You cannot measure yes. all the population. Not the yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah, that's what I meant. Thank you for correction. How can I know if my mean is anywhere near the exact value? Is there like specific way to measure that? Yes, we'll talk, about about this in the, we'll talk about this next, uh, next chapter, which is parameter estimation. How to estimate, how we'll talk about estimating the mean of the population and what's the error in that estimation. So we'll talk about that, yes. Uh, we'll talk about, as, we, as we will see, there will be many assumptions that we need to do about the population. We cannot just, if, not have, if we do not have any idea about the population, it's very hard to, to, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to uh, estimate the error. However, assuming that the population is normal, as we will see, which is a very common case, uh, then uh, we'll do, we can do the, the, we can check the error in in our and we'll see how different ways of improving the estimation okay i started check in please go to blackboard and check in your your attendance i think we lost the share i will uh, reshare my screen because it turned off where is the uh, okay So let's pause a minute to to you do the attendance. Uh, Victor. Yes. Uh, can we have the solution for uh, the midterm? Yeah, I have it. I will, because uh, a few students, they did not take it yet. And I will not give them the, the uh, those who were sick, I will not give them the exact, uh, but, uh, it might be related to what you got. So I will, uh, I will post it once I give them. By the way, those who were absent, I will uh, make an announcement from the later date. Your makeup exam will be on Wednesday. Uh, so uh, I will I will put an announcement today for those who were absent. Which Wednesday, Doctor? The coming one? Yes, the day after tomorrow. But Doctor, I can't. I'm still in the quarantine. Yeah, I know. There is one or two in quarantine, and you will see what to do. We'll give you an exam after after the break. But uh, for those who, who are not in quarantine, or if they are in a, I'm not in a hurry. I will. Uh, I can exam everyone after the break and i'm just wanted to give you an idea for those who are considering to drop the course because i know this it's the end of this week right Dropping the course so if those who, who are sick want to 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 move this to till after the break i'm fine with that uh, i have to another course that i need to put an exam for uh, professor yeah it would be better if everyone gets out of quarantine and does then does the exam Way to do what? Because you you said uh, two one or two people have to do it right on Wednesday. So rather than like that, we can just wait for everyone to get out of quarantine and they do it together. Okay, I'm fine with that. And probably we have we push it till after the break. 
because it's like a short notice and it's going to be like and every professor is like trying to get us to do the exam right now no yani and i assume to study the material and then suddenly you got sick on that day right it's not a planned sickness that's what i'm assuming <laughs> so it's uh, unless it was a planned sickness that's that's a different thing but uh, and that's what i assume yani you still have the material ready in your mind so we'll, يعني, I will, uh, I will put an announcement uh, related to that again. So most probably I will push it till after the break. Yeah, maybe it's easier for me even. Okay. So we did the. Will you give the announcement today? Yeah, I will put it later today, inshallah. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Uh, excuse me, doctor. I have one question. Yes. Uh, what about the computer assignment? What should we yes. do? Yes. Yeah. I would. I uh, also. I announced in the, the morning class uh, since I promised to to to, to help in it, and uh, I did not. I will push the deadline, and I will try to to post something related to to helping you. And and uh, on Wednesday we'll cover the histogram. We'll see. I mean, that's why I wanted to push it a little bit because we did not cover the histogram yet that you need to plot. Uh, so we'll do. We'll cover the histogram in on Wednesday. So I will push it also till after the break. The the computer assignment. Uh, okay, thank Don't you. Worry. I will put the announcement for related to that as well. Uh, okay, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Fine. We did the sample mean, the median, and finally the mode. Mode is simply the most frequent. The most frequent value. In the observed data or in the sample. So if. If this is your data, you collected your samples. Two, three, five, six, one, three, nine, one, three. Which value is most repeated? Three, right? Is the most repeated data. So the mode is is three. So just very simply in mode, it will give you which, what is the typical, typical observation, typical data in your in your observations. Uh, so, so someone might ask, what if no value was repeated? Well, simply, there is no mode. What if more than one value is repeated the same times with the same times? For example, if in the above example I have two, three, five, six, one, three, nine, one. Three, one. So as you can see here, we have one also. I have three ones and I have three threes. So I have multiple modes here. So here we have multiple modes. One and three. By the way, I forgot to mention in the median, so median, we say the middle point. What if my the number of my observations is even? The average of the two mid, almost middle yes. points. Yes, for even number of observations, just average two middle points. Okay, so this should be. This should be simple. So all of this tells us about the location of the data. The mean, if you go and you do your study and you come back to me, you told me the the average of the weights of QU students is 70. And then I know that in whatever, HBKU or Texas and m or any other university, they told me it's 70 or 75 or 60. So that will tell me, okay, uh, probably we should focus more on sports. They should focus more on sports and probably we should promote healthy food and so on. So it tells you 
the location of 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 your your population, the center of your uh, population. However, we have other set of measures which are measures of variability. And measures of variability tell about the spread of the data. And as you expect, the first one will be the sample variance. We define the sample mean, then we do the sample variance, and similarly given x1, x2, xn observations or samples, values of the samples, the sample variance is defined as we call it S squared is summation from I equals one to N X I minus X bar squared over N minus one. And please remember this N, not N. We don't divide by N, divide by N minus one why is that again we'll see this next chapter when we talk about uh, uh, different estimators and uh, what's a good estimator what's a bad estimator uh, we'll see we have something called unbiased estimators and for the the sample variance to be a good estimator or an unbiased estimator we need the denominator to be n minus one not n so here larger sorry larger sample variance means larger the data are more spread around its X bar. So if I have those two sets of data, so assume that I have something like this. You calculated X bar. This is your X bar. And then you have another set of data. And this is your X bar. Which one will have? Larger sample variance. So if here I have S1 squared. I have S2 squared. Then the data on the left clearly has more spread. So S1, if you calculate S1 squared, it will be greater than S2 squared. So the sample variance has to do with the spread of the data. It has nothing to do with the exact value of the data. So those data may be, this is my, might be, this might be 100, 101, 102, 99, 98, 97, maybe. And this is might be uh, whatever, 10, 8, 6, 4, 2, 0. So the exact value of the data does not matter. What matters is the distances between, between them, the, the sample variance captures the spread of the data, not the exact value of the of the data. The square root of S bar is S, which is the sample standard deviation. Again, if we have the values for 
the whole population then we can calculate the population variance which is defined as summation from i equals 1 to capital N xi minus mu squared over over n and again not n minus one because here we are not estimating anything we are doing the exact population <coughs> population uh, variance and now the population standard deviation is sigma so sigma is simply just the square root of summation from i equals one to capital n x i minus mu squared over over n another measure of variability a measure, measure that tells me the spread of the data is what we call the sample range and sample range is simply again given observations x1 x2 all the way to xn again always remember x1 to xn this is the values of the data that you collect or you observe in the lab the sample range are is simply the maximum value minus the minimum minimum value of the observations here as you can see for the uh, for those two examples what's the range here for the right one the range is 102 minus 97 is 5 while the one on the left, the range is 10 minus 0 is 10. As you can see, the one on the left has higher range because it's spread more than the one on the on the uh, on the right. So for the above example, R1 equals 10 minus 0 equals 10. R2 is 102 minus 97, which is 5. So clearly, group 1 has more spread. Okay. So this is many some of the numerical ways of presenting <coughs> your data and we move to graphical representation of data and the first method we talk about is what we call stem and leaf diagram Stem and leaf diagram is, <coughs> uh, I would say, not very popular popular in engineering, at least in, in the, uh, not very popular in engineering. Maybe in, I'm not sure, maybe in other uh, disciplines, in my field, I never seen a paper in my field that uses the uh, stem and leaf. I've seen tons of papers using histograms but not stem and leaf uh, the first time i saw a stem and leaf diagram was in my second year in phd the professor was distributing the grades and he, he was statistics course and it was a statistics course and uh, he gave us piece of paper it has all numbers i did not understand how to read it even 
and he said this is the same leaf diagram of your grades and uh, yeah it's, it was nice yeah, to, to learn it so how does it work let's do an example to better understand how the stem and leaf let me let's assume that what is the scissor how do i cut i cut the data here here Okay, copy. So assume I have, assume I have this, this set of data, your, uh, uh, you are developing a new specimen, specimen, uh, using aluminum lithium and you do this compressive strength those in mechanical engineers, but more specifically in materials engineering. And you did your experiment, you get all of this data. And now you, you need to present this data uh, to your supervisor. Uh, he asked for uh, numerical, uh, sorry, he asked for a graphical representation. And you knew that he does not know anything about sim and leaf, so you wanted to impress him. So the way stem and leaf works is you come to each number and you split it into two parts. So let me use the red. So here I will use the singular and the 10th digit as the what we call the leaf. And then, uh, sorry, uh, I will use the Singular digit as the leaf, and then the tenth and hundredth digit as the stem. So the one on the left is the stem, and the you know the stem. What does the stem mean, right? Stem, like the stem of the of the tree, is the sac, uh, and the leaves are the the leaves. Uh, so you split each number the same way, all of them. And then you plot the data in this way. Let me, you plot it in this way. So this is an example from your book. So, for example, uh, number 76, where 76, this is 76. You put the seven, you split it into two parts. Seven is the stem, six is the leaf. And then eight, 87. We have 87, should be somewhere. 87, we don't see it. We have 97. Hmm. Oh, 87, yeah. Okay, so 87, you write it here, and then 97. So how do we read? Then you have 105 and 101. So you write them, all all the numbers that have the same stem are written on the on the same on the same line. So this is this line, for example, it means that I have a data that's 100 five and 101 this line means i have 199 196 190 199 again 193 and 194 and so on so you group all those uh, data points with the same stem uh, on one line and this will be the way you present your data why is this better than leaving the data in the table like this? Because having it written in a stem and leaf diagram tells you a lot. What I mean, exactly looking at it right away, I can tell you what's the minimum value of my data? 76, right? So this is the minimum. You can write away minimum equals 76. We know the maximum. 
245. The table, it's, it will take you a while to, to, you cannot decide even like this table. You cannot decide which was the largest value, was the smallest value. It, it will take you a while. Also, you know that your data, the center or the approximately the average of your data is somewhere here, right? Around 152, 154, and so on. So, you know how your data is distributed. So more, most of your specimen, specimens, they, they perform between whatever, 130 and 108, and so on. So having a stem and leaf diagram will tell you a lot about your data. It's categorizing the data. It tells you about the spread of the data, tells you about the location of the data, where your data is located, how is it spread, what's the maximum, what's the minimum, what's the range, you can easily get a lot of insights from from the the uh, looking at the stem and leaf diagram and this uh, column and then tells you the frequency how many data points you have with that stem so as you can see the largest we have here we have 12 12 data points with stem 50 15 which it means that 150 psi i guess the units uh, in this so this is the, the uh, stem and leaf diagram, uh, just categorizing the data in a nice way to get more insights uh, about it. I saw a hand, someone has a question. Uh, doctor. Yes. Shouldn't the leaf be in increasing order? For example, if he's check row. Um, uh... Yeah, not, ne not necessarily, yeah, I understand. Like row 10 should be one then five. I think the way they, they establish this, you do it one by one. So you don't need to rank your data before. You don't need to spend more effort before putting it down. So because this one, you will, uh, you just fill it as you move on. So it's fine. You don't need to put them in order, no. Come on, come on. Okay. Type. I, I think I will stop at this point with the stiff, uh, stem and leaf diagram, and uh, it probably will spend 15, 20 minutes of the next lecture about uh, other graphical ways of presenting the data and then we'll move to parameter estimation which is the the theme of the of the next uh, chapter that we will uh, continue after after the break okay so again for those who came late midterm exams are out if you need to look at your papers uh, come on wednesday between 12 and 2 or during the office hours, if you want to do it online. And uh, most probably I will do the, we'll do makeup, optional makeup for everyone. Uh, the first week after the midday, the break, and we'll do the makeup for the, those who missed it also during the first, first week after the, the break. With that, I wish you a uh, energetic week. Please keep putting effort. It's uh, not a very convenient time to you, to everyone, but yeah, this is life. You and the people are uh, studying under wars, under poverty, under uh, hunger. So Alhamdulillah, we have, we don't, we don't do all of this. We don't have all of this here. And online is online, and it's uh, and you just live to it. And sometimes it's more convenient. And I'm sure it's more convenient to to uh, to to many people. And it, uh, and I'm teaching the master and PhD course. You know that one. It's students have to come. And a couple of students ask me to to do it online. They cannot because they live far or they have full time jobs. So it's it's sometimes more convenient if uh, if you look at it that way. Doctor, optional doctor. makeup. Yes, optional makeup will be online. Right. Yes. Okay. Tamam. So MCQ question. Multiple choice question. Don't think, don't think I'm, I'm giving you uh, points from my pocket uh, online. It will, be, it will be for sure, it, it's meant to help you, but you have to study for it. It's, it will cover the same topics that the exam, exam midterm covered. So exactly, uh, no, no extra topics. Okay? Yeah. See you, inshallah, and uh, talk to you on Wednesday, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum.